Hello everyone! Is it me? Or are things feeling just a little bit festive currently? Because it seems like Santa Claus came early this year to slam his massive scrote filled with presents right onto our desks after having been kicked out by Mrs. Claus for sleeping with Rudolph again. Oh, whatever will that dastardly person do next? We've talked about what's going to be mentioned in this video before and how, of how the gaming industry is awash with out of touch and out of pocket devs who give fewer shits about their audience than Amber Turd gave to Johnny Depp during their hearing. My dog stepped on a bee. The amount of absolutely banger games that have been dropped on our laps recently has actually been rather scary to admit. But until AAA daddy comes back to spank us good and rotten, let's focus on the goodies our dear boy Santa has been giving us. And oh boy, there have been a number of banger games that have spewed forth from this fountain of creamy Santa goodness. <clears throat> um, sorry, I'll stop with the sexually frustrated Santa jokes now, I promise. With games such as Power World being one of the most recent examples to show that it's actually worth listening to your audience and innovating on an idea rather than being more stagnant than a sloth. Pokemon. Not to mention with games such as Phasmophobia, Poppy's Playtime, Baldur's Gate, Cult of the Lamb, Among Us, Lethal Company, etc, etc, etc. There are a number of games that I'm sure you've played and know what I'm getting at when I'm referring to games that actually care. The aforementioned games truly showing the power of the indie developer and that simple concepts actually do work and that you can actually make a game without turning into a gratuitous microtransaction hell. Oh, but today, oh boy, today Inky's got her own scrote of goodies, because we're going to be talking about Helldivers 2. Which you probably should have gathered if you would have read the fucking title of this video. Helldivers 2, the newest game to take the world by storm, and quite possibly the one game that will unify all the people discontent with their current loot shooter's lackadaisicness. With fans from in and outside the loot shooter's genre bubble cascading in to get a piece of that democrat dem democratic inducing goodness, and that is staying in. <laughs> At least, that would be the case, assuming you can even get into the game because apparently suffering from one's own success equates to the servers being more full than Santa's scrote. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I promised I wouldn't do another one, but I lied. I'd like to point out that I've been playing Helldivers on and off stream with my friends, yes I have friends, and it has been a blast, in every sense of the word, creating some of the funniest moments in my recent gaming time. <laughs> mm, mm, yes. Mm, ow! <laughs> Why would you do that? I just want to watch you fall over. Uh-huh. Why? What? No. <laughs> oh! <laughs> It is worth mentioning that there was a Helldivers 1, but it was so niche and forgettable that as well as it might as well have been made an entirely different dimension really. Only sharing similarities with the naming of enemies and the world's general vibe, so really it doesn't hold any precedence into what we're talking about with its significantly better looking brother. It's like, not even a question, it's like Helldivers 1 is you and Helldivers 2 is the overly attractive friend that she told you not to worry about. That aside, you're probably asking, what is this game? And why do I get a sudden surge of democratic pride welling up inside of my loins? Well, sit down little Jimmy and let Auntie Inky tell you all about it. You are John or Johnette Helldiver, a faceless soldier of the futuristic dystopian version of the human race born to make Super Earth great again and defend it from galactic tyranny from those damn dirty Xenos races. <laughs> yes, definitely the Xenos races. The, the Xenos races, they started it all. And, and anyone that says otherwise or says that it was our fault should be tried for treason. <laughs> anyway. You will notice right off the bat that from the trailers and general aesthetic of the game that Helldivers 2 has a striking similarity with the franchise Starship Troopers. I'm doing my part. A movie series made in the late 90s that was inspired from the books written by Robert A. Heinlein in 1959. There was also a bunch of Starship Troopers stuff that came after the 1999 movies, but we're going to pretend that those don't exist, like anyone with sanity probably should, and really the 1999 movie and TV shows that came out around the same time are what most people fondly remember for the IP, and if you don't remember, you are too young for my channel, get out of here, Yazuma. No, 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 wait, 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 don't leave, don't leave. I need the analytics. To help set you up with how to understand what you're getting into with Helldivers, let's explain what Starship Troopers is, as it's the best analogy we can give. Starship Troopers, for the uncultured ones amongst you, 
was in essence a very heavy satirization of what would happen if democracy and citizenship were the guiding principles of our society and originally people kind of hated Starship Troopers, not really understanding the, oh wait, this is just us, isn't it, motif that it was trying to rub in its audience faces. Because you know, humans don't like being represented as the bad guy and have a, has as much self-awareness as I do with being constantly in hunger for a glizzy. But over time, people did start warming up to it when they started watching it more of a parody rather than a serious movie. And ever since then, it's kind of garnered a cult following and is now a hugely popular franchise, having been the starting point for a bunch of today's well-known actors, such as Clancy Brown, best known for being everybody's favorite drunk uncle from Detroit Become Human. Why do I gotta be the one to deal with this shit? Michael Ironside, Neil Patrick Harris, and even Dean Walter Norris, best known for his role as Hank Schrader in Breaking Bad. Yeah. But to round this back to the subject of the video with Helldivers, Helldivers basically took everything that made Starship Troopers so amusing and grody, but then decided to dial it up to 11. The guts, the gore, the gritty gunplay, the comical satirization of the politics, and the very in-your-face notion that maybe the bugs were just doing their own thing, and maybe it was you that started all of this. Well, not you, your government, and in their hunger for expansion, and they just spin it to the brainwashed masses to get on board with the extermination of innocent species. I have been reminded by management that slander of the government is not demographically Gucci, and that I should just stick to explaining the game and read the goddamn script. <laughs> please, please don't kill me. So, Helldivers is, in essence, a parody of Starship Troopers the movie, which is, in essence, a parody of Starship Troopers the book, which is, in essence, a parody of our modern world. God, I, I sure hope VTubers don't exist in this universe. I, I don't know if I'd be able to handle democ demo democracy, Chan. But now, for what you've all been waiting for, the meat of this video, Helldivers 2. We get back to our main protagonist, John or John at Helldiver, our faceless soldiers of Super Earth's military. And for the first port of call when you start the game, you are basically sent through quite possibly the shortest tutorial that's ever existed. Being that the tutorial is all of three or four rooms long and as simple as my brain, it's really a telling sign that this game is setting you up for how everything is going to go. That you don't need to know the minutiae of everything. You don't need to know what's going on because the only thing you need to know is how to spread democracy with force. Good. Next lesson. Helldivers fight. Man down. Don't sweat it, soldier. Friendly fire is just an unavoidable fact of life. Nothing at all you can do to prevent it. Which in of itself is a very telling sign as to how this game is going to go. As what you need to know and are told is that if it isn't human, kill it, take its planet, and that, oh, you, what's that? You have a nice resource rich planet? That's not yours. That's ours now. Oh, complaining, are we? Not in this democratic world, plebeian. Taste liberty! And because apparently Super Earth is ran by a bunch of gacha developers, they tug on your dopamine receptors for doing literally nothing by giving you your own capital ship, crew, arsenal, and let's not forget the most important thing. Your sexy as fuck cape. Now there's a hell diver. Along with the 80 other thousand saviors of mankind that have done the exact same thing as you. And once you're out of that very short tutorial, that's where the game starts. There is no intrinsic story or cyclical nature of the game. Once you're out of the tutorial, you get given a star map and you're off to spread democracy, which in of itself works perfectly. You are a faceless, replaceable goon, and if you die, there'll be a hundred more to replace you. Your only job is to spread democracy as the hero of Super Earth and squash anyone or anything that would dare speak against your democratic right to be cringe and brainwashed. Before you get into the game, however, I think it's worth taking note of just how well this game immerses you in just how massively multiplayer it is. Every one of the ships you see out of your fort port window are actual players going about their missions, which is awesome. Those drop pods and cannon shots are actual deployments and military strikes being called in by players doing their thing in their own mission. A small little feature that wasn't needed, but makes you feel like you're part of the bigger picture and overall global galactic conquest. And speaking of galactic conquest, all of this being complemented by the fact that every time you complete a mission, you are contributing to the universe-wide collective effort to stop those damn dirty bugs. Or robots, we're not picky. 
the, all of which can be seen in real time by your star map with real time changes in how well or bad each faction are doing. All with the ultimate goal of stopping the enemy factions from reaching Super Earth in the middle. And speaking of those democracy hating, liberty opposed monsters, each faction you go up against feels great to fight, each with their own unique theming, enemy types, flavors, and weapons and strategies. And as you go through the levels, both will start implementing incrementally harder tactics and deploying bigger and tougher baddies, really making you have to rely more and more on teamwork and your utility of giant, your giant arsenal of gadgets, stratagems, and the gear you unlock by playing the game. And something that's been confirmed by the developers and our open eyes by looking at the southern part of the star chart, there does seem to be plans for a third faction eventually, so who knows what emotionally compromised scumbags those could be. Hmm, I wonder if they'd be willing to make VTubers or furries a faction. I can see it now. Giant monsters wearing fursuits being blown asunder by napalm. Oh, the democracy to be ensued by that. And now for the gameplay. Oh boy, the gameplay. One thing this game epitomizes and something a lot of loot shooters fall flat on is its focus on its core principles. There's very little in terms of mechanics and minutiae in this game. So what there is to do is refine down to a point where it is satisfying. There is no better word for it. Satisfying, grody, great. Please, editor, unleash an epic montage here. <laughs> yeah. Let's run in and kill. Johnny Rico moment. Uh, get some, get some, get some, get yeah, some. Yeah, you're dead. I love that. I'm oh, the bo oh, that's kind of cool. The, the bomb just like landed on the on the dude. Oh fuck! It's a natural bomb. Oh. It's a natural bomb. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a set piece. I'm so glad I didn't shoot that at <laughs> I thought it was a set piece. <laughs> oh, dear. And really, that's kind of it. You have your mission types with things like defend objective, evacuate civilians, exterminate lots of enemies, VIP big baddie assassination type missions, and of course the mandatory collecting of resources to help you with your upgrades. And yes, to some on the outside that sounds like it's a little bit too simple to possibly have any longevity. And in respect, yes, I can understand where you're coming from with that, but really the ideal of keep it simple stupid works immensely well here. There's enough motivation to grind so that you can unlock your ship and character upgrades that it never feels like you're in a mission for no good reason. And even the lowest level missions have an encouragement for the highest level players because you're always gaining the same resources at no matter what level, it's just the amount you gain changes on the difficulty. Helldivers really pushes the I that idea that you don't need all the bells and whistles to make something fun. Just focusing on a core concept, being lighthearted with good theming, and making core mechanics polished is sometimes all us gamers actually want in a game. Something the AAA industry could really learn from. What? Gamers don't like being turned into pay pigs and manipulated and actually want good gameplay for a decent price? Push, 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 the audacity! But back to the point, the combat in this game is constant and gritty enough so that it'll never really feel dull. The enemy and weapon variety is so versatile that playstyles and engagements are always fun and varied no matter the level and offers plenty of challenging scenarios and adaptations so that you always have something to do and something to feel challenged by. All the while, not making early content irrelevant. And let's face it, it doesn't matter the level of game you're playing, watching a nuke go off to spread glorious democracy and wiping out an armada of democracy liberty-hating Xenos will never be boring. That's some good dev dem- oh, that- Yep. <laughs> yeah, I beautiful. love the sight of a nuke uh, ship 500 meters away in the morning. Oh, we got Sorry. friends over here. 
Yeah. Guys, can't you see I'm trying to enjoy my democracy over here? What Helldivers has done that so many other games have fallen flat on is being given a concept and not bogging it down with unnecessary filler and fluff. Yes, there is a microtransaction store, but 90% of what's there is just cosmetic fluff. And you can earn the premium currency by just going through the progression and unlocking your regular gear. So, if this is only the start for Helldivers 2, and it's already this enthralling and polished, I cannot wait to see what comes in the future with the potential of 16-person mega raids, and the potential of a third faction, and even potentially space battles. And really, that's about it for Helldivers 2. A great example of great gameplay and organic game development given to us in a time where we feel like we've been behooved by the AAA developers that have so ruthlessly swatted our ass with the belt of hatred. This was my first attempt at writing a script video since I stopped making content for my main channel in an attempt to dust off the old content creation boots ready for a new era of content that'll be coming to the main channel, which you should totally subscribe to. So be ready for that whenever this donathon that I'm in ends. Whenever that is. Let me know what you thought of this, and if you'd like to see more. Let me know what you think of the game. Maybe come by our Discord and Twitch, where we are avidly playing this game currently, as of this video going live. And I'll see all you MILF divers in the next video. The M in MILF stands for Makari. Ha! Oh, oh, why, well, when I summoned a minefield, um... Makari, watch out! It mean Luby already knew about the minefield. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, it shouldn't hit me. You oh, spawned dead. me back in the minefield. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's karma. Why? Oh, no, Why would you do this to me? Wait, I gotta, wait, okay, I've got to be careful. Just slow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No! Don't! Oh my god, stop wait, it! Wait, wait, I want- Oh, I want my gun! Fuck off! No! Uh, ah. Oh my god. Oh, thank you, you got me, knocked me over a mine. Wait, wait, wait. Ah. Oops. What do you I mean, oops? The robots are just watching us from afar.